Hello everybody, this is just going to be a quick update today on what we're doing in the vineyard or what we're trying to uh, get sorted uh, for the forthcoming year. It's now the back end of April and uh, we're going to do something a little bit different in the vineyard this year and that is to install um, irrigation uh, which we haven't had for the last couple of years and we really suffered for it I think last year because it got so hot and it was so dry for um, such a, an extended period of time, about six, seven weeks or so without any rainfall at all and some of the vines really started to struggle. So much so that they became quite stressed and it meant that um, the vines were very susceptible to mildew and things like that. So roughly half our vines uh, were, they're, I mean they're fine, but the grapes uh, from them weren't brilliant. Um, so we almost had to discard those, which was a bit of a waste um, and very frustrating. So we're not going to make the same mistake this year. We're going to um, get uh, water on them throughout the, uh, the dry months of um, sort of about July, uh, August, even September. It was quite dry. Um, and we're going to do that uh, via a borehole. And this is our borehole. Um, now it's a little bit away from the vines themselves which are way over there beyond that hedge over there so we're going to have to put a um, a line over the field to it but the borehole was here anyway so we thought we'll just get it reactivated and, and uh, brought back into use um, but I have got to do a little bit of um, uh, sort of infrastructure work and that is to dig a trench over past the trailer next to that barn there which is going to house the uh, tank and the pump and everything like oh no sorry the pump's going to be down in the borehole itself but that's going to be where um, all the electricity and the pressure vessel and all that kind of stuff is going to be housed. So behind me is where I'm going to be building the uh, the shed uh, which will house the uh, basically the pressure vessel and uh, the electrics and everything. Uh, we need a pressure vessel just so that it's got um, you know some pressure behind it when we sort of turn taps on and things like that. Uh, in theory I suppose we could just let the pump uh, right down at the bottom of the borehole do all the work but I think it's just sort of standard practice to have a pressure um, tank and we've got a 200 litre pressure tank um, being installed behind me um, in this little bit of uh, area here and uh, that should provide the, uh, the pressure that we need um, when we come to call upon water as it were. So um, this short it is roughly, it is quite short really, it's only, um, I don't know, what's it, about uh, 25 feet, something like that. Uh, it's not a great distance, but when you're digging it out by hand, it feels like forever, to be honest. Um, I could get a trencher, but you know, that just costs uh, an unnecessary amount of money. And I could, I suppose, borrow somebody's backhoe or something like that to dig out a trench, but I've got uh, this fantastic, um, I think this is called a mattock or something like that. It's, uh, I don't know if you can see it, it's about a nine centimetre uh, blade, um, which is perfect for the uh, type of pipe that I'm putting in. Um, anyway, you just hack, a, hack uh, to the ground, to, sorry, hack the ground as if you're doing it with a pickaxe, as it were, and you get a very neat uh, looking trench uh, when, you, uh, when you're done. So I don't know if you can see that, but that's pretty good. And of course it fills up with water just because of where we are but that's no problem. Just behind me on the ground here actually is the old borehole uh, pipe work and this is how they used to do it in the um, olden days. They had roughly a, a two inch or two and a quarter inch um, pipe um, going right down to the very bottom and uh, at the top you ha used to have a, um, a pumping um, mechanism that would oscillate this uh, wooden ram basically up and down and at the bottom of the borehole you'd have a one-way valve. At the top you'd either have a windmill uh, or a, in our case we had a mechanical um, pump which was driven either by uh, electric motor or um, a steam engine or something like that. So this was the old way of doing it. Um, nowadays we have uh, electric pumps which go down um, the bottom of the borehole there to do all the hard work. Right, so next to the barn here, I'm going to build a shed, um, so which is going to house the uh, pressure tank, as I say. And the reason why um, we're putting it a little bit away from the borehole itself, which is just over there, um, is because if we built the shed right on top of the borehole, or right next to it, if we ever needed to bring the pipe work back up, um, it's just for servicing or if something breaks or whatever, it's going to be a lot harder to do if we've got a building or something right next to the borehole. 
either that or we've just built a massive great big thing around the borehole where it's uh, easier to do but of course that's a lot more expensive so even though it's a little bit more hard work to dig a trench and all the rest of it this short distance or relatively short distance it feels like forever when you're doing it by hand but it's easier and cheaper if we just build a separate shed which will house the pressure tank and the electrics and all that kind of stuff separately so that's what I'm going to be doing over the next uh, couple of weeks or so but I'll keep you updated and uh, yeah I'll see how we get on but anyway till the next video that's it for this one bye for now <laughs>